hello and welcome to Ghosts of Dufferin County and Beyond. I'm your host Marianne Kennedy and we are in the studio again today. So we have a really exciting show ahead of us and I'm really thrilled to introduce to our studio today Dr. Jeff and Darlene Sutherland. I'd like to let the viewers know at home that Jeff will be speaking to us through this amazing technology and software uh, where he will be using the focus of his eyes to create answers for us. Now, I will also let you know that most of Jeff's answers are going to be, have been pre-loaded so that we have less of a delay in the response. So, welcome both of you to the studio. I'm so happy to oh. have you here. Um, Jeff and Darlene are here to talk to us today mostly about Jeff's soon-to-be-released book, Still Life. Uh, it's an incredible book, a memoir, and the book looks uh, deeply into their family's experience with initially a life-altering uh, diagnosis for Jeff, followed by, unbelievably, the devastating and unexpected loss of their son, Zachary, and his girlfriend, Kaya. So, Jeff, I'd like to ask you to tell us a little bit about Still Life and what inspired you to write the book. Still Life is my memoir. It focuses on the last 12 years of our life. It initially starts when I was first diagnosed with ALS when I was 41. Our life had been very fortunate up to that time. Darlene and I had a fantastic, loving relationship. We had three wonderful, healthy sons. I was doing the job of my dreams as a family physician. I was delivering babies, working in the emergency department, teaching family medicine residents, and had a thriving office practice. All of this ended two years later. By then, I didn't even have the physical strength to lift my stethoscope to a patient's chest. I first talk about how ALS and how it has changed our lives. It is a frank discussion about loss and the love required to keep living with devastating physical disability. I thought that with ALS, I had taken the bullet for our family. But in early 2016, our eldest son, Zach and his girlfriend, Kaya Firth, passed on the small river that runs behind our new home in a kayak accident. The second part of Still Life was written during the first year of my grief mm -hmm. journey. It is an intimate look into acute grief. It talks to how we had to redefine our old beliefs into new ones, specifically spirituality and are redefining our beliefs of the other side yeah. and soul's purposes in physical form. Spiritual mediums, like you, Marion, were essential in the development of our new beliefs. The third part of Still Life contains my thoughts after experiencing both physical and emotional profound loss of the qualities that are important to live a resilient life full of purpose. Yes, that's beautiful, and I love uh, that. Well, it's a real interesting twist on things that we do speak about spirituality and the nature of souls, and of course, Jeff, your background is in medicine, so it's quite a transformation, perhaps even an unexpected um, change in philosophy, which is remarkable. Um, Darlene, if I could ask you, prior to the loss of Zach and Kaya, did either of you feel like uh, you had given any consideration to the possibility that souls or consciousness may survive physical death? It's such an interesting question, Marianne, because myself personally, um, I certainly didn't. I had friends who had lost um, parents and who sought out mediums and found great comfort in it. And I was thrilled that they had that peace given to them, but I didn't feel a need to explore it further. Jeff, on the other hand, had a near life experience where it really caused him some time to contemplate the possibility but I have to admit that we carried on with our lives mm -hmm. and did not explore it further. 
until the loss of Zach and Kaya, and um, and it was really brought to us mm -hmm. at that point, and it was not something thinking of souls living on after the physical life that we ever had a negative belief that it didn't occur, but honestly, we didn't explore it because we didn't feel that we needed right. to. Yeah, that makes sense. And so, uh, this is interesting. So Darlene, you mentioned a, a near life experience and did we mean near death experience with Sorry. that? Yes, oh, Yes. Perfect. did I say near life? <laughs> yes, yeah. okay, I just wanna make sure yeah. that Thank we, you. yeah, I wanna capture that. And that sort of leads into the next question I wanna ask, and Jeff, I'm gonna phrase this to you. Um, it's an interesting piece that you actually have had a near death experience, but were there some sort of spiritually based experiences that you had in in the after loss or in grief or in your life um, that ever suggested to you that it could be possible that we continue on in spiritual form after physically passing? From our first experience with spiritual mediums, we knew that we were in contact with Zach. The mediums knew things that only our family knew. The mediums brought this information with other confirmatory evidence. Both Darlene and I were educated with science backgrounds and the importance of evidence before drawing conclusions. The evidence brought to us from spirit left no doubt in our minds that consciousness exists after physical life. Now that we are open to its existence Zach, in spirit, shows himself in nature through birds and other wildlife through visions by friends who didn't realize that they had the gift of communication with spirit and through music. Our charity has been holding an evening with spirit fundraiser, thanks to your generosity, Marion, during these events. I am witness to, and I am amazed with the accuracy of your communication with spirit. That's beautiful, and what a great segue to lead us into the next um, bit of information that I'd really like to explore. Thank you for that, Jeff. Along with the Firth family, uh, you have both created the Zach Sutherland and Kaya Firth Resiliency Scholarship Fund, and so. Um, We'd love to learn more about that. So Darlene, could you tell us a little bit about that endeavor and, and what's involved there? Sure. Um, we actually just, uh, exciting news, we just found out that we are actually now a registered charity. So we're, we're very proud of that. The impetus um, really surrounded knowing from the very beginning of our loss with Zach and Kaya, and they each have two other siblings, um, so we each have two other children, and we knew how impactful the loss was on us as adults, and we knew looking at our children that if we weren't there and supporting them and providing unconditional love, that it was going to have the possibility of creating further tragedy within our family. Sure. And in honor of Zach and Kaya, who always wanted to help other people, uh, we felt the best way to carry their message and their legacy forward would be to really support and acknowledge youth who've had tremendous adversity dealing with the loss of a close friend or family member in that they have the rest of their lives when they should have had a very innocent um, life they're having to deal with this. So we really want to recognize their resilience and hope that their stories give hope to other youth and other families moving forward. So we really want to draw attention and open the discussion surrounding grief and its impact. Absolutely. And how many uh, individuals have been awarded with a scholarship to date? We have awarded 10 and wow. over $20,000 in uh, scholarships have been provided. Wow. And what we're really proud about that is we're looking at the individual and their story. And when we're supporting their post-secondary education, it has no bearing 
on their financial need, their scholastic ability, whether it be they're heading off to university, college, an apprenticeship, or have already started that. Our, um, it, our emphasis on the scholarship is more toward the individual as a person because we know that they are absolutely going to be our leaders of tomorrow having traveled through the adversity that their loss has mm. put them through. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really wonderful thing and I've spoken about this before that um, what I often see in the work that I do is uh, this transformational effect that um, can be spurred and often is out of the most tragic circumstances. Mm. And so when I listen to you speak about the impacts of the scholarship fund and how many folks have been awarded this and how many lives have been changed because of it, um, it's this really beautiful uh, making of really beauty, beauty in the utmost form out of the really, really the darkest space. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's uh, folks like you uh, you might not see yourself this way, but these beautiful, brilliant, shining stars of light that become anchor points for folks along the way. And we're all really here to help each other. Absolutely. Right? None of us are, are here to walk this journey alone. So when, when I listen to your journey, and even, even if we speak about the book alone, or if we speak about the scholarship fund alone, um, you are making you know huge impacts, uh, indeed your own legacies, beyond what you've already created prior to this, out of the deepest loss. And there's something incredibly profound about that. Darlene, can you tell us where we can learn more about the scholarship fund? Quickly, uh, maybe with a website to, if we have it. Love to. Our website is um, very uh, cleverly titled uh, "Choose to Be Resilient." So it's www.choose the number two be resilient dot com. Okay. And we thank you, Darlene, for that. We're going to go for a quick Perfect. break, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to Ghosts of Dufferin County and Beyond. Today we are in studio with Dr. Jeff and Darlene Sutherland and we're here to talk about this incredible book, Still Life, which is Jeff's forthcoming book, uh, soon to hit uh, locations near you. Um, and we're also speaking to them about their family's journey through grief and loss and how that has impacted their lives and indeed the lives of uh, many others uh, connected to them. So Jeff, I wanted to ask you, loss of a very close loved one is uh, indeed one of the most challenging experiences one can have in a life. And this book talks a lot about uh, wisdom and insight 
um, for those living in the after loss experiencing uh, profound grief, um, which makes it incredibly helpful. What do you feel are you know some really special points, the really important pieces that you want to share as part of your message in terms of helping someone uh, move through or cope with um, the experience of loss? I think that the book will help people talk about grief more openly. It will give people more tools to support others who are grieving. I hope that through reading the writing that I wrote in my acute grief that they will find that they are not alone. Through reflection, work on self, and discovering purpose that they can choose to not be a victim from circumstance but incorporate their loss into their lives and eventually start their healing journey. There are such huge moments of truth in everything that you've just said. Uh, hugely powerful and, and true that a journey alone is much more difficult than one where we feel we have partnership in some way. Um, Darlene, what do you feel like you might add to that in terms of advice or wisdom that you feel is really important, like really important pieces for someone, whether it's through acute grief, further through the process, or at any point, just things that were really important and helpful. And I know that you were a big part of writing in this book as well. Um, so anything that you have to add to that? What I would say, because unless you've really experienced really deep, deep, uh, acute grief. I personally was naive to the fact of how all-encompassing it affects you mentally, emotionally, physically. Every part of your being is really wretched and torn apart and shattered and it really takes a rebuilding and it takes a lot of time and effort and really being surrounded by people who truly love you and can sit and just hold space. And we're not expecting, we would love that they could fix it, but we know the journey in that part of it is singular in that we have to work through the depths of our darkness essentially alone, but to know that we have the comfort when we need to be held, when we need to be com you know, comforted, through words, through support, mm -hmm. but never expecting that someone can fix it for us as we would love to fix it for our children and for one another. And we realize that an society doesn't re put enough emphasis on the healing journey, which is a lifetime journey, I must Indeed. add. Yep. It's not a short term. It's not the three days of bereavement leave that you get from work. It's Right. a lifetime endeavor and I think we really need to bring that discussion out into the open and and really not shy away from the difficult discussions that arise from it. Yeah, you both bring up really good points. Um, one, Jeff, you were speaking about um, creating space to talk about loss, to, 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 to talk about grief, mm. to share one's experience. In the work that I do, um, and it's a very generalized statement, but what I do find is that we, I, I often come across sort of two buckets of individuals in, in, in a particular regard. One would be bucket A, where I will unapologetically speak about my loved one, uh, and, and I won't shy away from that, even though it's sensitive for uh, other folks. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sometimes I'll have bucket B, which, is, which would be that it's too painful to speak about, mm -hmm. and there isn't a space either socially or uh, community-based or family-wise, right. there isn't space that's created to honor discussion about a life lived uh, that is no longer continuing. And I have often found that, it, not only in my own grief, but in the you know thousands of folks that I've worked with, that having this space to speak mm. is this beautiful recipe that at least holds potential mm -hmm for uh, greater aspects of healing. What would you say about that? Oh, I so agree to that. And it's really important to follow the lead of the person who's grieving. Absolutely. If they wanna talk, 
you have to work through your uncomfortableness, but just hold space. They're not expecting for you to have a word of wisdom that will make it all better. If somebody uh, chooses that they don't want to speak, maybe just provide the support or perhaps even bring up a memory of that individual who's mm. passed or the situation and say the impact that they've made on that individual. So it's really being careful not to overstep, but at the same time, hold peace for that person, hold space for that person, and don't make it such that it's in a negative vein, but it's more of one of support, comfort, and hope for the future. Sure, absolutely. Now, you both speak in the book about um, several experiences that you had with many mediums mm -hmm. throughout the course of this grief journey that, as you mentioned, Darlene, doesn't have an expiry date on it, right? right? Um, so one could say that actually you're both quite experienced with the world of mediumship now, at least on the other end uh, of the process being the end of receiving messages. Right. So. If you could provide some, perhaps some, again, insight or wisdom for any of our viewers that are considering perhaps sitting with a professional medium to help them on their grief journey, Darlene, what would you sort of have for them? I think it's such an important question, and it was brought to us about five weeks after Zach and Kaya passed from a very close friend asking if we had ever considered speaking with a spiritual medium. Honestly, we had no consideration whatsoever, and we brought the boys, Ben and Nathaniel, into the, the discussion to see what their thoughts were. So we all decided, okay, we will move forward with, which was one of the best decisions we ever made. Having said that, it was a very dear friend that had a recommendation of a medium that she and other family members fully trusted. So this is one of the most vulnerable times in a person's life, and it's not the time to Google search. Some medium who may have an ad that's flashier than others, this is just as you would ask the opinion of others for a surgeon or a healthcare professional if you're entrusting them with your life. Mm -hmm. It's so important to speak around and ask, you'd be surprised, even though it may not be an open conversation, that there are definitely friends or acquaintances who have had experiences and can direct you towards someone that they feel is kind, is, is certainly talented, and first and foremost can validate that who they're bringing through is truly your loved one mm -hmm. um, instead of just generic statements. So it's so important and our cautionary tale for everyone is to seek out someone who is tried and true with a dear friend of yours because if your experience is a negative one when you're most vulnerable, chances are you will never want to Put yourself in that situation again. Absolutely. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge advice. Mm -hmm. It's huge wisdom <clears throat> in my teaching practice, um, of course, in my own professional practice. Um, you know, your skill, uh, level of ability, level of personal development um, is incredibly important. And, and these uh, processes of development, they indeed take years before yeah. someone really is in a position to sort of hang that professional shingle as mediumship. Absolutely. And so of course in my role as medium I hear stories all the time from clients who had a you know devastating experience with mm. a medium that perhaps wasn't operating either from a heart center, wasn't very experienced and what I always teach my students is, is exactly this, well mediumship is fascinating and it can be a lot of fun as well depending on the type of connection that we're making. Um, one of the things that we can never lose sight of is how holy and sacred this work is, that you're an intermediary between uh, potentially two folks that have the most powerful bond you've ever imagined. And we have to take that role uh, seriously, um, and we have to uh, take such great care of the folks who choose to come and see us, because often they are in mm -hmm. the most vulnerable state mm -hmm. they've ever experienced within a life. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel um, Darlene and Jeff, and I guess Darlene, I'll pose this to you. How do you feel your experiences with good mediumship 
has somehow aided you in your loss? Oh my gosh, you know what? It's, um, and we've been quite open with individuals in, in that we want to share an experience that was a tremendous part of our healing and continues to be a tremendous part of our healing process, knowing without a doubt that our loved ones and Zach and Kaya being first and foremost and many others that we know, that they are still present with us every day has been tremendously healing and helpful. Um, and, and what we always say to someone is that we're not trying to indoctrinate, we're not trying to convince, we are only providing an offering that thank goodness was offered to us during our challenging time and it allowed us to find out some answers um, from the other side and, and it gave us, basically as a parent it gave us um, the closure in terms of knowing that they're okay, that they're better than okay, that there's so much more meaning mm -hmm. and that this life really has proven to be um, I, I really, for lack of a better word, a, a teaching ground to help others and support others. Mm -hmm. And I think bringing this forth to individuals who are never considered it or were afraid to previously, it has helped us immensely. We thank you so much for sharing that. You are the faces of resilience and beauty at play and though your journey has been incredibly difficult up until this point, it's also an incredible model for the existence of love, the two of you, Zachary, Kaya, all of your family. Um, it's quite an inspiration. Um, I'd like to thank you both for coming here today. Um, you really needed to be here and I'm grateful you are. Jeff, if you could let our viewers know, where can they find Still Life? Still Life is available through the major bookstores in Canada and the U.S. Perfect. Specifically at Indigo, Chapters, and online through Amazon and my publisher, Sutherland House Books. Wonderful. Check that out. I thank you all for being here, and we will see you again next episode.